Hey guys, it's your best five friends. I'm Kelsey. That's Anthony Pettis. Anthony, I talked to you before, right after you signed with PFL before the season started. And now you're smack dab in the middle of it. You have a big fight coming up at PFL four on June 10th. How excited are you to get back in the cage? Man, super excited. Honestly, that's one thing I'm happy about with this uh, format. You know, like my last performance, I wasn't happy with what I did out there. You know, I think um, I let the pressure get to me. I went out there, I fought a, a weird, a weird style that, um, I shouldn't have fought against this guy. And, um, you know, I, I paid, I paid the results for that. You know, that was a decision I made. So, um, I went back to camp, I went to Vegas and, uh, worked on my basics, man. I, I saw where I was missing, like my, my holes and like the, the little areas I was missing. So I went focused on that, got that fi figured out, fixed up. Um, and if, if it, it was exactly what I needed, like it, it was make, it was what I was missing with that, finding that rhythm, finding that flow, I was trying to force everything. So, um, I went back and found it and man, we only had, you know, seven week turnaround. So it's, it feels good to be right back at it. You lost the decision to Clay Collar. I think it was PFL one. Mm -hmm. You talked before about having a target on your back. And do you feel like, because from the just watching the fight, it did seem like maybe you were trying to do something spectacular um, rather than I just mean, you know, I was I was just fighting a, a flashier style. You know, I chose yeah. a traditional fight stance. You know, I didn't go orthodox and didn't try to you know I'll box him. I tried to you know go to a, a fight, a uh, flashy fight stance. You know, orthodox my taekwondo uh background but um yeah i think uh i definitely um i played into that you know it wasn't like you know it wasn't like he he did something different or just something I, I didn't see before i've seen that style before it was just i chose the wrong style to fight that style yeah and you've been successful with the flashy style right you've had some of the most incredible moments yeah, just, in mma history I mean, and, and i just keep forgetting you know like most of the mo big moments in mma like when, when them happen is like i built it up with basics like the, like the showtime kick happened in the fourth you know fifth round of a title fight not not you know the first two minutes you know like i was, I, I, look, I didn't look for it till I, I won the basics so that's what i'm attached to this fight go in there win the basics and then build up i talked to clay collard and also was at the press event before your fight and he kept telling a story about running to you in the ufc and just feeling like you know you look down on everybody or you he said that basically he felt like you were better than everybody and I, when i heard it it was weird to me because i don't i've never got that feeling about you i've never seen anybody else say that but I, I mean, wonder, I like, what was your probably, attempt at? Probably because the what they have us, they have us in a bubble. So we're here for 17 days around each other. You know, and these are the guys I'm fighting for the season. You know, so I'm walking around confident. Like, if that's if that's if he makes mistakes, my confidence for like looking down on him. Now I'm just, I just feel like you know, I've I've fought every style in the MMA before. So like, I don't see anything like, like I haven't seen before. And you know, I, I'm I still walk around confident even after that last fight. That's just how I, that's just who I am. Story of makeup. He says that stuff to himself. So that he, that's the way he gets up for fights. You know, some people that, do that, that. That that makes sense. I guess if he's like you know, building up, but you know, I'm I'm not that dude. You know, I think I'm I'm very uh, and I come from a traditional martial arts background, and I keep the respect in this thing. Yeah. Well, I've seen a lot of on Instagram. I've seen you a lot where it looks like you said you're working on the basics. It looks like you're throwing a lot of boxing in. Do you feel like that is a way back to victory? You fight Alex Martinez on June 10th. Obviously, he's an entirely different fighter, but do you feel yeah. like boxing will be important? I think um, it was important for me to find the basics again. You know, I, I was attaching to like these big moments and I was trying to practice the big moments where I, I should have been, pra been practicing the basics. Um, so I think going back to the boxing gym and reminding myself, all right, the footwork drills, this is how I move. This is how I step forward, backwards. I like get into the basics really helped. And I attached it at this camp. I'm like, all right, that's how you build up these big moments. And um, yeah, it felt good, man. I mean, I really put myself in a, a, a scary position in Vegas. Yeah. Like, like that the boxing gyms ain't no joke. Like these, there's killers at all them gyms. There's no like soft boxing gyms in Vegas. So I went with uh, Jorge Capatillo and, um, you know, he, he's trained like some guys like Lenars. He's training, you know, for Tyson Fury right now. So like he yeah. has some great guys real boxing guys, you know, real boxers that are, you know, fighting at the top level. Um, so it was cool for me to see, man, to see that culture and like get, get, get that flow and feel that rhythm again and find a, find that love for that. That's part of the game. Yeah. It's so amazing. MMA is so amazing to me just because you always are looking for ways to grow and learn even you, right. You're one of the yeah. most popular UFC champions in history. And here you are still trying to like learn stuff so much to learn man yeah that's that's what the, the beautiful thing about mixed martial arts is it's like you know putting it together is like, like even my little brother like his last fight seeing him put it together like that i was like man that's so beautiful i was like it's like a beautiful performance that's like you know the world's blessed to see because it's i know how hard that is to do out there yeah um pfl math can you i don't want to get it bogged down in pfl math but you go into this fight and yeah i you fight so I'm wondering, my question is this, do you have somebody there that's trying to like compute all this so that you nah, know exactly man, what nah. you have to do? I mean, 
like the, the most points I can get is six points. Right. So it's like, I got to go out there and focus on that. But if I, if I find, if I get a first round finish, I get six points, second round finish, it goes down third round goes down. So, I mean, the objective is to, uh, to hopefully get six points and, and put myself in that tournament, you know, and it all depends on what happens in these fights too. Cause a guy who has three points right now, if he loses, then he's, you know, he's still at three points. Right. Um, so it's, it's kind of weird, you know, like some like guys are fighting guys who you know, won and lost before. So, yeah, I don't want to get too crazy in that. My job is to go out there and win this next fight um, and hopefully look for the finish. And that's what that's what I'm going to do again. That's good, because I feel overwhelmed just trying to understand it. So I'm glad Rough. you're not worrying your head about that. Um, mm. I love the PFL format, though. The season format's awesome. But you know what? Like this thing with Clay Collard, maybe I also love the other format where maybe we have feuds now. So are you hoping that? Maybe you see him in the tournament. <laughs> oh yeah, man, for sure. Hopefully he gets, you know, he gets through. I get through, and we see each other in the end of the tournament. Yeah, definitely, man. I feel like I need to pick. I'll pick back up what I fight left off. And I hit him with that big kick and that jump knee, and I was like, I, I was surprised he didn't get knocked out. So I know now I'm going. If yeah. I fight him again, I fight that body. You were a longtime UFC champion. This was your debut with the PFL this year. Another guy is returning to the UFC action soon, and one of your old opponents, Nate Diaz, right? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of when he fought you, right? Because you were just coming off the Stephen Thompson fight at Welterweight. Uh -huh. Big fight, a big knockout win for you. And here, and at the time, people were like, why would Nate Diaz want to fight this guy when he's been out of the octagon for a long time? What do you think about him wanting to fight uh, Leon Edwards in this? Yeah, I think he's smart about it now. He's being smart about his career. I think, you know, at that point, you know, we, we got the experience. He's choosing his fights right now. He's waiting for a guy to, like, get close to contendership, and then he, like, calls him out. And if he wins, he gets puts his name in a hat. So I think he's, he's being smart about his career right now. And he's, you know, he's calling out some killers, man. Like, yeah. like Leon Edwards is a killer too, bro. So it's like he's not he, – he's no punk. The story make up, maybe it's me coming from boxing, but when you have a big name, you don't have to fight Showtime – Anthony Perez, or you don't have to fight Leon Edwards if you don't want yeah. to. This guy wants to, but he wants that. You know, he's hungry for that. For, put his name back in that title running. That's good. That, that's that. That's the fight he should want. If if he's you know, like, if he would have called out somebody else, somebody else, maybe he doesn't want to fight. Maybe he's like trying to come back. But he called out Leon Edwards, so you know he's 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 getting ready. And his brother's in camp too. I think so. I mean, they're probably just you know, they're probably just loving loving the the training lifestyle. I, mean, I got my brother too. I know how that feels. Like once you get in the vibe one guy wins or one guy gets some motivation. The other guy gets it. It's, it's dope to have that. Yeah. That's awesome. That's not a, something that a lot of people are able to, nope. you feel like he can win the fight? Nate Diaz? Yeah. Oh yeah, man, for sure. I think Nate, Nate, they can win any fight. I think um he does get cut a lot, you know, so I think he has to watch the elbows because Leon Edwards is a great clinch game. Uh, he's really good with like four pressure. He uses the clinch. So like when guys come at him, you know, he, he doesn't stop really with the wrestling. He stops him with a clinch, and then he beats him up and then backs him up. So if, if uh, Nate can use that dirty boxing in the clinch and get him on the cage, make it dirty, dude has cardio, man. Because, like, when I fought him, I remember, I was like, dude, just, he just doesn't get tired. I just watched that fight because it's the UFC free fight. Mm -hmm. So I really watched it. it was man, really I caught him with the first right hook, and I hurt him. And I, I should have stayed south on him. And I, I switched back orthodox, and I low kicked him in the second round. Dumbass decision. Like, it's crazy how these fights happen. Yeah, it's crazy. It just turns on a dime, and there's so much you have to be. Prepared. Yeah, man, I broke my foot on his knee, and I'm like, I, I, I <laughs> fell down, and I stood up, and I'm like, I couldn't plant anymore. Yeah. So I'm like, it's crazy. That's not the thing you want. Do you think he will win the fight? Um, man, I haven't put a lot of thought in that one, honestly, bro. Like, I, 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 it's been a while. Like, I've been focused on what I'm doing right now, so I haven't like really been watching super hard on contenderships and who's next. Um, he, I think he has a chance for sure. I, I just don't know, uh, you know, if he can deal with that clinch. That's going to be the deciding factor is how that how he could deal with that clinch because if he tries to walk him down, Leon's putting him in a clinch. He's going to you know stop him with the clinch, low kick, put them hands on him. Um, so we'll see how he deals with that. He looks like he packed on a lot of muscle, unless it's a camera trick. Have you seen the on Instagram? Like his he's like no, nah, I haven't seen it. No, nah. Jack, bro, does that help or hurt? You think? Yeah, it just be, depends on the, the style of fight you want to fight, man. If you're if you're trying to be quick and loose in in, in and out, then you know you want to be. You don't want to be jacked if you want to. If they're looking to hold somebody on the cage and you know, out grapple them and out wrestle them, the more muscle mass you have, the better. You're one of the few people um, who's left the UFC that I've seen, at least in my short time covering the UFC, that actually left on good terms with Dana White. So I wonder if you could share your your secret, right? I don't. I don't ever hear you talking noise about Dana, and I never really hear Dana talking noise about you. No, nah, Dana's my boy, man. Like um, when, when I first up, when I was up and coming, you know, from WC and then. I had to earn my title shot in the UFC. Um, man, me and him been through so much together, bro. Like, like I remember when I bought my mom a house, I was FaceTiming, FaceTiming them, telling them thank you, like, um, getting the cover of the Wheaties box. Like, me and, yeah. me and I, I'm in Vegas, so, like, 
I see him all the time. We, you know, we've been, been, been to fights, dinners, like we had a good, good friendship, you know, and I never, I never talked shit about him. He never talked shit about me because I came in to fight. You know, when I, when I, when I was there, I was like, they were like, yo, who wants to fight Wonder Boy? I'll fight him. You know, like, so there's nothing really, you can't really, you can't really say much. And then, uh, leaving on the two fights wins, you know, I fought my contract out. Like there's not, I did it right. You know, I wasn't like talking shit before I was going to leave or anything. I was just like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I told everybody, I even told him, I'm going to fight my contract out and uh, see what happens from there. I love that about. Yeah. Now we left off on great terms, man. I still talk, I still talk to him. Do you ever feel like you could give a class to maybe somebody like John Jones on how to interface with. (laughs) Man. I mean, the crazy thing about that is like, he he technically, well, he is our boss. He decides how much money we're making. So like, relationship could hurt and could you know uh, uh, aff- affect money as well so it's like there's a fine line between that you know where business talk and friendship and all that that flows so all my business i pass to my managers i let that flow through them and then you know when it was friendship time it was friendship time yeah i love that about you um i do understand like john jones a little bit because i'm i'm a feelings person too so I've gone on inter- the internet before and like tweeted a bunch of stuff that maybe I shouldn't have. So hopefully that works mm-hmm. out. Do you think they'll end up making that fight with Francis? I hope so, man. That's, that's what we all need to see, bro. I'm, I'm actually really happy for Francis. I, I know Francis from Vegas and like seeing him at the PI and like, dude, he's such a good guy and like to see the, the success and the, the level of wrestling he got in like one camp, man, dude, he's going to, he's dangerous. Like he, like he, he looked good out wrestling. So um, good, good things happen to good people, bro. So hopefully both of them guys get a, get that shot. Good things are happening to you, man. You're the face of the PFL, one of the faces, right? I see you all over there marketing all the time. You definitely deserve it. You have a big fight on June 10th against Alex Martinez. What's your prediction for that fight? I'm putting them hands on him, man. I think, I um, mean, you know, I've been working on my boxing. Um, I'm still going to use my kicks, but I, I, in this in this approach to this one, I'm using my hands a lot and finding that range, finding that rhythm. Um, dude's good. Like, he's undefeated. You know, he's, they, they, they picked a great group of lightweights, bro. There's like... Yeah. The lightweight division stacked everywhere. Any any organization you go to, lightweight stack. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh me just fighting a, f- a smart fight because like last fight I wasn't I wasn't smart out there. Like in the wars I was throwing cartwheel kicks and like I just look sloppy. So I want to fix that. Well, I'm excited about it. I'm really grateful to talk to you again. Thanks for what for the chat. No problem, bro. Later.